Greetings, my lovelies. This is Blake here, and welcome to my review of The Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 1. So, uh, I am kind of an idiot. Uh, I was filming this vlog earlier, and I realized that I had forgotten to plug in my microphone. Um, so, uh, I had spent like five minutes talking about this movie, and realized that none of the sound was even picking up. I guess it could have been worse. I could have had forgotten to plug in the webcam, <laughs> in which I'd be really, really, really stupid considering, you know, whenever I film myself, I could see myself on the computer, <laughs> so that that would be a real hard thing to screw up, but with me, you never know. Um, so anyway, The Hunger Games. I like these films as individuals, but I can't really say the franchise as a whole intrigues me. So, you know, I think The Hunger Games and The Hunger Games Catching Fire were good, not great, but good films. Um, they're even better than, let's say, the majority of the Harry Potter films as individuals. But I felt with at least the Harry Potter franchise, there was a lot more potential in terms of character, story, and spectacle. Uh, you know, I, I felt that those films definitely deserved to run for eight different movies. Well, I kind of wish Order of the Phoenix didn't exist, but it does, so I have to live with it. Um, with The Hunger Games, though, I kind of felt like it played all of its cards in the first film. Um, so even by the second film, I started kind of getting tired of it. I didn't feel like I needed to see any more of this world because we pretty much saw everything that it had to offer in the first film. Um, you know, these characters, yeah, they're interesting enough to fit the situation, but at the same time, there's nothing particularly memorable about them. I don't necessarily want to see them in more and more movies, uh, whereas at least, like, Lord of the Rings, I thought, had a much more colorful cast of characters whom just, you know, captured my interest, even when they were just walking around doing nothing. Uh, and then the the storyline, you know, I mean, The Hunger Games didn't have the most original setup to begin with. I mean, if you've seen Battle Royale, you've seen pretty much the same kind of idea. Uh, but still, I mean, The Hunger Games themselves was the major po selling point of the first film. So either they could recycle the idea over and over again to where it starts to become repetitive, which Catching Fire kind of did, or you take that established formula and smash it with a hammer, do something totally different, throw out the Hunger Games scenario in its entirety, and develop your own story using the same world and characters. Uh, that's going to piss off a lot of people, too, because, you know, they, they're they in it for the formula. They want to see the actual Hunger Games. That's why they're going to see a movie called The Hunger Games. Um, so you can't please everybody, and maybe that affected my lack of enthusiasm that, you know, I, you know, either I was going to be annoyed that they weren't bringing back The Hunger Games, or I was going to be annoyed that they were bringing back The Hunger Games. <laughs> I wasn't really sure. Uh, so it all came down to the quality, and the more and more I heard about this movie, the more I heard that it was the weakest of this franchise so far. Uh, so that didn't help. Even though, you know, the reviews were still you know, reasonably positive, they were much more lukewarm compared to the first two films. So, what did I think? I thought it was... Alright, it's not bad, it's um, not even really mediocre, it's just, I left the theaters feeling very unsatisfied. Uh, this is not going to be an easy movie to talk about, because there's very little I could say. It's well made, but it seems kind of fillery. Um, in fact, I could probably stop the video right there. So, let's begin with the story. Uh, <laughs> um... Can I say, um, there was nothing abnormally stupid. I never facepalmed myself in frustration at the character's idiocy or, you know, the storyline becoming more and more contrived in, over, in order to advance. Now, it flowed relatively well. Um, even though it's definitely padded out, I never found it to be boring. I was always at least somewhat invested in what was going on. Um, 
it utilized its cast of characters pretty well. Um, for example, Gale, who I thought was totally unnecessary in the first two films, um, you know, even though I know that you know, he was prevalent in the books, it felt like they were trying to capitalize on the Twilight-esque love triangle that's all the rage these days um, back when I saw those. But I thought you know, he was more prominent in this movie and felt more important to the overall storyline. Uh, so that's good that they're making use of him, finally. Uh, I've, never been, I've never been a big fan of PETA, but... I thought the way they they used his character in this film, um, where he's just kind of being propaganda for the the bad guys, you know, the total opposite of Katniss, that that was pretty compelling. And I and I thought, you know, the actor did a pretty solid job at conveying emotion without being allowed to actually convey emotion. Um, Katniss, I was really concerned about because there's only so far you could take stoic before it starts to become very dull. Uh, but no, I thought they this movie provided her enough room to show off more of her acting abilities. And, um, you know, she has enough, you know, deadpan, snarky type moments to, that, yeah, she kept me entertained and interested. And, you know, she gets to show, you know, more tears, more drama. Uh, and I also really liked how... You, you you still feel that she's a definite badass, but you also get the impression that that's definitely not going to be enough um, to overcome this current situation. Um, her purpose within the story is to primarily act as propaganda. Um, many people might be disappointed in that because you know they want to see her going in total survival mode and kicking lots of ass, but she really doesn't. But at the same time, it heightened the suspense and the stakes for me, so I was fine with it. Uh, I was disappointed that Woody Harrelson's character didn't have as big of a role. In fact, he seems kind of unnecessary in parts. Uh, I was sure that he wasn't even going to appear because when they first mention him, they say that uh, you know he's at another facility, which I just interpreted that as you know maybe they couldn't make a deal with him or just didn't want to pay the extra money. So you know. I'm sure he'll show up in the next film, but he's going to you know, take a break during this one. But now he showed up just a lot later than I would have expected and not for as long as I would have expected. Um, I wanted more Elizabeth Banks. To me, she is the highlight of this franchise. And I, I'm glad that she does show up, but uh, I, I can't blame the movie for, for underutilizing her considering how apparently her character was not as prevalent during the books. Uh, but because people responded so positively to her throughout the movies that they keep, you know, bringing back and expanding the role. So I'm glad that the filmmakers, you know, caught on to that and decided to, you know, go ahead and follow through with it. Uh, but, you know, she's still probably not in the movie any more than she was in the other films, or at least the second one. Um, I, I liked the new edition of President Coyne, um, played by Julian Moore. I like how there are certain aspects about her you really admire. Um, she does seem like a competent leader, but at the same time, there's a certain coldness to her to where you could easily see her becoming the same monster she's trying to fight. Uh, and to me, once again, that does add to the stakes, to the suspense. Um, and, uh, you know, President Snow, I think, is a great villain. You know, Donald Sutherland is awesome in that role. Perfect casting choice. You know, he's kind of charming and sophisticated, but at the same time, there's a certain smugness about him that makes him really vile. Uh, uh, he's evil without not without overtly acting evil. Um, so, so I always like him in these movies. Uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman also is pretty fun, even though it's not a major role. Uh, I, uh, it, it made me sad knowing that he's no longer with us. He looks kind of trashed in some scenes, too, as if he's maybe hung over, which is awkward. I watched uh, A Most Wanted Man with Philip Seymour Hoffman, and, man, he looks really messed up in that movie. But he's such a great actor. Uh, so, yeah, it, it, that's very tragic knowing that, you know, he died probably not long after filming this. I don't even know if he filmed anything for part two. Um, so... The acting is good in general. Um, the special effects are usually good. I um, 
there's this one part where they take this airship to Sector 12 very early on where they had like a medium shot of it at first that I thought looked very CGI. Um, but then they have like this real wide shot where I could have sworn that ship was just a toy model. I'm sure that's not the case, but it was a, a very bad shot, and I'm surprised they kept it in. Um, but otherwise, yeah, I had no issue with the special effects or the action scenes. Um, there's one really, really intense moment where they're actually mounting a rescue operation, and uh, and that was a brilliant case of not really showing us too much, but using you know sound design and you know lighting and just the situation in general. It reminded me of uh, Zero Dark Thirty when they assault um, Osama bin Laden's compound. Um, that really kept me on the edge of my seat. That was very, very intense. Uh, but otherwise, there isn't a whole lot of action in this film. In fact, there's only really two major, or maybe three action scenes. Uh, um, also, I forgot to talk about this in terms of the writing. There was one eyebrow-raising moment very, very, very early on where they have like a recap scene that I thought was very, very forced and goofy sounding and kind of lazily done. It just, it starts off with Katniss pretty much just saying what happened in the previous films, presumably for the people who are watching this but have not seen them, where she's saying, I'm Katniss, I, I won the first two Hunger Games, and she, you know, just on and on. I just like, why, why is she saying this? I didn't buy into that at all. Uh, but still, that's just one scene, no big deal. But the problem is, is that it doesn't really end. Um, it just stops in a way, though, that made me kind of angry. Uh, so I feel like with this and a lot of these other movies that are breaking up the last book into two separate films, um, there's too much material for a, within that book for a single film, but at the same time, there's not enough material for... Uh, two films, so they have to kind of stretch everything out, but at the same time, they're only picking stuff that's presumably important for the story for the last film, but at the same time, it's, it's none of the highlights, the memorable stuff, the what we will remember in regards to this franchise. Uh, so by the time it ends, you're just like, what did I watch? Very little seemed to happen in this movie. Um... Uh, and that's that's really just what it comes down to. Uh, they stretched out maybe an hour worth of material, maybe, perhaps even less, to two hours worth of material. At least this one is shorter than the other movies. Why can't The Hobbit do that? If you're going to be three different films, they should not be three fucking hours long. Um, but, uh, but still, it's just... The only reason this one exists is to set up the the second film, or the last film, um, I guess I have to clarify that, the second Mockingjay film, the last Hunger Games film. Um, there's this one part in the movie where Katniss is messing around with a cat by just, you know, moving a flashlight, um, you know, all around, and the cat's chasing the light, and then she stops, becomes kind of distressed, and says that she realized how you know, President Snow, the villain, has been toying with her in the same way. Well, I kind of feel like that's what the producers are doing to us. Where it's like, oh, oh, you want to see what happens next? Oh, you want to see what happens next? Well, too bad. You're going to have to watch the next movie. <laughs> um, so that annoyed me, and that really undermined the overall experience. But still, it's not a bad movie. Um... Whether you should see it or not just depends on what you felt about the other films. If you have not seen The Hunger Games or Hunger Games Catching Fire, don't watch this until at least you've seen those. Um, if you're kind of lukewarm as to, to the first two movies, I don't think you're going to like this one anymore. In fact, you'll probably think it's inferior, so you might just want to wait till it comes out on DVD or Blu-ray. Uh, but if you're huge Hunger Games fans, yeah, I, I guess it's worth seeing in theaters for. Uh, just lower your expectations a bit and maybe not pay full price. So, 
that is my review. I hope you enjoyed it. I did not do a written version, but I have done written reviews of The Crippled Avengers, a kung fu flick, a Zombie by Lucio Fulci. I, I'm sure I've done more. I just can't think of them off the top of my head. Um, Halloween 6, The Producer's Cut, and my next one, which should be up either tonight or tomorrow, is Terror Train, an 80s slasher. So read all of those and I could practically assure you that Critiquing the Critics will return next week. I'm about 70% done, uh, and I'm probably going to rewrite the last 30% to where it's easier to film. So as long as there aren't any um, blunders beyond my control, that should finally, finally be done. Uh, so thanks for watching. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Um, I shall see you guys later.